Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Uh, today we're going to do a short video introduction of our brand new TS-H2490 FU NAS. This is the fastest NAS we've ever made and it's the first NAS we've also done with the AMD EPYC CPU. Uh, we'll talk more about that CPU a bit later on and why we've, we've chosen it. It's a really good fit for this product. Um, We'll jump straight into the two variants that we're offering um, for this part number. So we've got the top option, which is basically on the differing um, specs between the two units, um, everything's double on the uh, the top spec model. So instead of 64 gig of RAM, you're getting 128 instead of eight cores in the CPU with th uh, 16 threads, uh, you're getting 16 cores and 32 threads. Um, and uh, also the final option here is um, you get two uh, 25 gig LAN ports built in as standard. Um, or on the top spec model, you will get four of them built in as well. Let's move straight into looking at what the unit actually looks like. So here's a picture of the front. So you can see the 24U.2 um, MVME base there. Um, and we do also do an optional accessory, which is the QDA-UMP, uh, which allows you to use M.2 SSDs in those U.2 drive bays. Um, so that's an optional accessory you can buy if, if that's your preference to use those instead. And here's a picture of the back of the unit. So on the left hand side there, this is the top spec model we have a picture of here. So on the left, we've got the four 25 gig LAN ports that are built in as standard. They're in slots four and five. And over there on the right hand side, you can see slots one, two, and three. Um, so if you wanted to add in any other expansion card options, so we have 40 gig options, fiber channel, 10 gig, um, lots of different options that you can fill those slots with. And to power all these accessories, we've got two um, 1100 watt uh, dual um, hot swap redundant power supplies as well. Um, just for good measure, there's two two and a half gig multi gig LAN ports there as well. So they'll do two and a half gig, one gig, hundred meg as well. If you uh, if you wanted to connect to those for any management purposes or anything. Um, if you did want to add any of the optional accessories into the unit, installing them is very easy. So if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, um, if you needed to add or, or swap out the PCI Express cards, there's no need to remove the unit from the rack, unscrew the top or anything like that. Um, the entire main board just slides straight out the back so that you can easily gain access to all the components to do upgrades, making it super easy and super quick to change those out. And as the whole unit is only two U's in size, it's quite light for something comparatively um, of this spec and speed, so it's only 15 kilos in the rack as well. And here's an overview of uh, where those components are inside, so if you want to know more information here, you can either pause the video here, or you can go look at our website where we've got a full list of every spec with the unit. Um, so when you're on the product features page, there's a button at the top right that lets you click on the specification, and that'll take you straight to the hardware specs of the unit as well. Uh, because it is multi-gig, um, 25 gig built-in ports that we've added, um, you can use this with different types of connections. So if you want the full speed, you'll have to use the 25 gig um, SFP28 um, transceiver modules that will go in there. Uh, but it is also compatible with um, 10 gig SFP plus or 1 gig SFP as well. Um, so we do our own range of uh, 10 gig switches, um, managed and unmanaged. Um, but if you wanted to use it with 25 gig, uh, you can use an existing switch that you may already have. Um, or we also do um, uh, DACs as well. So if you wanted a direct attach cable uh, to link this unit directly to something else without using a switch, um, we do uh, also offer the 25 gig cables as well. And so here's an example of one of the drives that is compatible with the unit. So this is the WD Ultrastar, the DC SN640. Um, and when we go through the specs of this really fast drive, we can, we can sort of see what we're up against. So if we're going to be able to put 24 of these drives in, each single drive um, will need a, a PCIe Gen 3 by 4 connection speed to it. So to get that sort of speed, you can't do things in the conventional sense that have been done in the past. So when we look at how things would be done in the past, option A on the left is the, the more traditional way. Some um, solutions out there do use option B, but you can see from the performance limitations we're showing here uh, why option B really isn't favorable. So if you use option B, you've only got a single uh, Gen 3 by 8 uh, pipe effectively to the controller and the expander. Um, so that's all those drives um, that you're trying to connect. All 24 SSDs are trying to come in down one 64 gig a second pipe, um, which is obviously going to bottleneck it. If you use option A, 
you do have um, a lot more uh, bandwidth available, but you, you are still limited by only having three 64 gigasecond pipes. Um, so effectively every eight drives is, is sharing a 64 gigasecond pipe into the CPU. So the way we've done it with the AMD EPYC uh, CPU is every single drive gets its own 32 gigasecond pipe. So they're all direct into the CPU. There's no controllers in the way or expanders. It's all directly to the CPU. So you're able to get a massive amount of PCIe lanes uh, out of this CPU. So that's the main reason that we've chosen it. So you can, you can see from this that the bottleneck is really being uh, taken away from things like the controllers and expanders that have been used traditionally in a solution like this. Um, we're also trying to help out with the SSD endurance uh, within the QNAP with some extra features. These are namely from our uh, QTS Hero operating system uh, that's available on quite a lot of our units now. So if you look at the specs of the drive, so here, here again we're using the, the same drive as an example, the, the, the WD Ultra Star. Now when you look at the maximum amount of petabytes ridden, or as they call it, drive writes per day, um, as you go up in size of drive, um, it's obviously an incremental upgrade. So the, if you go from a 800 gig drive to a 1600 gig drive, uh, you're getting twice the amount of petabytes that are possible to be written. So as you go through the different sizes, you're going to have um, a lot more capacity the bigger you go. Now when we have a look at the options that we've got, so with, with our technologies like um, inline compression and inline data deduplication, uh, we're using data reduction technologies to reduce the size of the data before it's even written to the drive. Um, so if you were using this device to store quite a lot of VMs on where a lot of the data between the VMs might be um, duplicated, uh, we're able to cut that amount of data that's actually needed to be written to the drive um, by a massive percentage. Um, so this is two things. It's really going to save you a lot of capacity, so you don't need to have as much capacity up front. But it's also going to have the capacity that you do have, it's going to extend the life of it because we're not um, doing as many um, writes per day, if you like, by having the data reduction options that we've got there. Um, so all of the um, uh, QTS Hero NAS that we, we do, um, you can tell which ones they are. They all have a, a small H in the part code right after the first dash. Um, all of those units, if you choose to run QTS Hero, can have inline compression and inline uh, data deduplication enabled um, on every share uh, and folder that you create. Um, so another reason uh, of why we've uh, designed this product is really why would you choose MVME over anything else? Um, so if you were to go down the route of the, the more traditional approach of a SATA SSD, well, the SATA SSD is, is already only a, a 6 gigasecond connection. Um, it's coming into the SATA controller, then to the CPU. If you go with the faster option, which would be a SAS SSD, it's double the bandwidth. You've got um, uh, effectively 12 gigasecond now to come in and out of the SAS controller. So it's faster again, but there's still um, the bottleneck of having these controllers there. With the MVME, because it's directly off the PCIe bus, it's able to go straight into the CPU. So the bandwidth is absolutely phenomenal on an MVME SSD compared to any other type of SSD, as you can see from the chart there. So around 4,000 megabytes per second for the MVME, down to as little as 600 megasecond for the SATA SSD. Um, and it's still fault tolerant as well, but the main benefit here is that there are no controllers uh, between the SSD and the CPU. Um, just finally, here's a performance test that we've done. You can see at the bottom the test environment information that we use to achieve these figures. So we're getting a read speed of um, around 14,000 uh, megabytes per second with a write speed of just over 10,000. And when you look at the IOPS, we're very close to half a million read IOPS there with just over 200,000 on the write as well. Um, so by far the fastest QNAP um, that we've ever made. Um, I, I hope you... Um, enjoyed the uh, uh, the video here and um, thanks a lot for listening and again if you do need any other information on the product um, please go to our website and um, we've got way more information and specs that i was able to cover in the video there thanks a lot